So I have made this Chelsea transfer video with the assumption that everything kind of goes back to normal, assuming they do get bought out by someone, which I think will happen before the summer transfer window. And so I am assuming that they aren't going to be significantly financially challenged by everything that's going on. And I do think that eventually everything will kind of go back to normal. However, of course that could change in the future. So just bear that in mind when you're watching the video. So at the moment, Chelsea are kind of in a Premier League purgatory, much better than the chasing pack for the top four spots, but some way off challenging City and Liverpool. They currently sit in third for points and expected points at the time this was written. They did sit in third for XG with 46.28, quite a way off City in second with 64.51 and Liverpool in first with 71.84. And they also sat in second for XG against, which may have changed by the time you're watching this video, but the point still remains the same and so these metrics do show that Chelsea are firmly the third best side in the league, but do need to improve offensively in order to compete with City and Liverpool. Now the whole context around Chelsea come the summer is still unknown with the outcome of Abramovich's saga still unclear but one thing is for sure Chelsea will still be able to spend a bit of money if they do get a takeover not least because of the potential money that they can bring in by selling players which of course is dependent on the sanctions being lifted. Christensen, Azpilicueta and Rudiger's contracts are coming to an end at the end of the season and whilst I think Chelsea should allow Christensen and Azpilicueta to leave I do think they should hand Rudiger a new contract if they are able to as he's one of the best centre backs in the world. He's only 29 and frankly it's going to be a lot more expensive to replace him than simply paying him a higher salary and signing on fee, which apparently is around £15 million pounds plus a weekly wage of £200,000 up from his current wage of £100,000, which I think is probably worth it overall, costing around £20 million pounds up front, but much cheaper than signing another world-class centre-back. The question of course is whether he'd want to re-sign, but I do think that as long as nothing has changed drastically at Chelsea, and that his wage demands are met, there is a good chance that he would re-sign, so I will assume that for this video. However, obviously that could all change. I would also look to sell Marcos Alonso, who has one year left on his current contract, which could bring in around £10 million. Ruben Loftus-Cheek could be sold for £15 million, Kennedy for £8 million, Emerson Palmieri for £12 million. Barkley should also be allowed to leave on a loan or a free just to get the final year of his contract off of Chelsea's wage bill. But I would also look to cash in on Christian Pulisic for around £35 to £40 million, pounds, Timo Werner for around £25 million, and Romelu Lukaku, who under certain circumstances could bring in between 60 and 70 million, a significant loss for Chelsea after just one year, but I think Chelsea are better cutting their losses and using the sunk cost fallacy to bring in some cash to then replace him with a better striker. That means that Chelsea could bring in between 160 and 175 million pounds in total just from player sales by my calculations, giving them at least 200 million pounds to spend in the summer. Also, if you do like the look of these phone cases, I'll leave the link in the description below. Anything you buy will help support the channel. My personal favorite it's the Ronaldo Sue celebration one, even though I do also like the Fergie one as well. But be sure to go over to the site linked in the description. They've got a lot of other designs as well. And if you use code AF at checkout, you should get 25% off as well. But where do Chelsea need to improve, especially with this many players departing? Well, goalkeeper is fine with Kepa and Mendy, and I think the back three of Trevor Chalabar, Thiago Silva and Rudiger is a very good back three, with Chalabar being a player who I think is worthy of being a starter week in, week out now. But Thiago Silva is now 37, and so I would be looking for another centre-back to come in and either play centrally in that back three, or play on the left side and allow Rudiger to play centrally, and ultimately be a long-term replacement. Malang Sar can be used as a left-sided centre-back as a fourth choice, and Reese James could even fill in as an offensive right sided centre back if needed as well. I also think that Chelsea are pretty set in central midfield with Kovacic alongside either Kante or Jorginho being a very good double pivot and I would also look to bring back Conor Gallagher as a fourth choice in central midfield providing a more attacking option from the centre of midfield and I'd give Billy Gilmore a loan to either a Premier League, La Liga or Bundesliga side before bringing him back the following season and having him and Gallagher replace Kante and Jorginho whose contracts expire at the end of next season. Rhys James and Callum Hudson Adoy are two very good offensive options at right wing back and at left wing back I think Chelsea need an Alonso upgrade which is why I've decided to sell the Spaniard and bring in someone to compete with Ben Chilwell for that position. I do think that Chelsea need a star creative player to play in behind the centre forward as well as Ziyech, Havertz, Mount and Pulisic are all very 
good, even top level, I think Chelsea could go out and get a world class player. As they could up front by offloading both Werner and Lukaku, having a new signing there with Armando Brogia being recalled from Southampton as the alternative. So this start with the centre back that I think Chelsea should be targeting and I would look to bring in RB Leipzig's 20 year old left footed centre back Josko Guardiol, who was signed by Leipzig from Dynamo Zagreb in the summer of 2020 for around £13 million and after a season on loan there he came back to Leipzig this season and has been attracting interest from the likes of Manchester City and Tottenham and it's no surprise why he's a very good technical player having a very smooth technique being a left footed player which is always a bonus and he's an absolutely fantastic long passer able to drive the ball with very little backspin allowing him to sit a runner free in behind the opposition's back line or switch the ball out to the opposite flank. This ability along with his ball carrying which will be highlighted when we look at his FB ref report makes him the perfect player for a left sided centre back position in a back three, being able to receive the ball wide of the opposition's front two or centre forward and having the space to be essentially a deeper line playmaker in possession. But defensively Guardiol is also fantastic, he's a very good one on one defender, closely fixating on the ball before putting in a well timed tackle and he's also very good at anticipating passes into the forward line, stepping out to make an interception and we can see how good he is at doing this when we look at his FB ref report. When compared against every other centre back in Europe's top 5 leagues, over the past 365 days, he ranks in the 85th percentile for pressures, the 84th for tackles and the 97th for interceptions. He's also completed 1.6 tackles per 90 in the Bundesliga this season and only been dribbled past 0.6 times per 90, giving him a very impressive tackle success rate of 72.7%. But his on the ball metrics are just as impressive as he ranks in the 96th percentile for progressive passes and 95th for progressive carries and the 98th for dribbles completed, whilst also ranking in the 90s for expected assists, shot creating actions and assists in general. Showing that Guardiol is an incredibly creative centre back which is why I think he's perfectly suited to the left side of Chelsea's back three. This would allow Chelsea to play with Rudiger on the right side, Guardiol on the left, either side of Thiago Silva or with the Brazilian aging and not able to play week in week out, Guardiol's presence would allow Rudiger to be used centrally as well, with Chalaba on the right side and Guardiol on the left. This would give Chelsea two very good left-footed centre-backs in Saar and Guardiol, something that could be crucial for a side's ball progression down the left side. Reportedly Leipzig only want around 25 million for Guardiol, which seems extremely underpriced, but an absolute bargain if Chelsea can get him for that, as I would pay up to 35 million for him. The left wing back that I think Chelsea should sign is AC Milan's 25 year old French defender Theo Hernandez who I would go as far to say is performing at a world class level and has to be in the top 3 left backs in the world at the moment along with Andy Robertson and Alfonso Davies. Teo is a perfect modern day fullback and if you want a comparison imagine Gareth Bale if he had remained as a left back. Teo has the same explosive dribbling ability as Bale having not just pace and acceleration but a degree of power as well that enables him to motor the ball up the pitch and drive the play forward which he can do when running down the outside on the left side or when he drifts in field and dribbles through the centre of the pitch. And we can see this as this season Teo has completed 1.4 dribbles per 90, the joint second most of any fullback in the league. And this would be an incredibly valuable asset for Chelsea to have, as neither Alonso or Chilwell really have that same ball carrying ability that Reese James does on the right side. And so with Teo on Chelsea's left, it would aid their ability to progress the ball from the defensive and middle thirds into the final third a lot quicker. But Teo also has a quality in the final third, with him driving down the outside into shooting positions where he has a fierce shot, able to drive the ball with power past the keeper. And this shooting ability can be shown as he scored 4 goals this season in all competitions, 8 goals last season and 7 goals the season before in 2019-20 proving that Chelsea wouldn't be sacrificing Alonso's goal-scoring ability by replacing him with Teo, who is equally as good in this area in my opinion. Defensively, he's also solid being able to utilise his pace, strength and tackling ability to be a very good one-on-one -on -one defender. He's also above 6 foot and pretty good in aerial duels as well, which is always a bonus. And this tackling ability in particular can be seen as he's completed 1.2 tackles per 90 this season in Serie A, only being dribbled past 0.3 times per 90. 
giving him a very good tackle success rate of 80%. When we look at his FB ref report, we can see how impressive he is as he ranks in the 69th percentile for progressive passes, the 90th for progressive carries, and the 93rd for dribbles completed, showing how good of a ball carrier he is, whilst he also sits in the 81st percentile for expected assists, the 75th for shot creating actions, and the 89th for non-penalty XG, and the 94th for non-penalty goals, showing that Teo is producing top level offensive output. Therefore, even though Chelsea would have to pay around £50 million for Teo, I think it's more than worth it as he's only 25, 26 in October and already a world class fullback and would completely transform the left side of Tuchel's attack. The next player that I think Chelsea should bring in is Serge Gnabry who is 26, 27 in July and has just one year left on his Bayern Munich contract come the summer and so I reckon he could be available for between 40 and 50 million pounds. In my opinion Gnabry is world class and when I show you his FB ref report you'll see exactly why I think this. But Gnabry is very much a natural wide player who can play as an orthodox winger holding his width and looking to beat his man before putting in a cross into the box but he can also play the role of an inside forward being given the freedom to drift inside to where he can either create or get into goal scoring positions. I would say that the latter is his best role and where I would look to deploy him for Chelsea playing as one of the two attacking midfielders in behind the centre forward. His dribbling ability is top level with him being able to glide past players in congested areas and his interplay with attackers in central areas is just as good as Tottenham and Chelsea found out in 2020 as in those games he showcased his ruthless shooting ability scoring four times in a 7-2 demolition of Tottenham Tottenham and scoring twice against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. He truly is a top level shooter able to wrap his foot around the ball to guide it into the far corner from the left side with his right foot or drive the ball hard and low across the keeper from the right side and he can do the same with his left foot as well which makes him precisely accurate and unpredictable a deadly combination. This season he's picked up 12 goals and 9 assists in 33 games in all competitions. Last season he managed 11 goals and 7 assists in 38 games and the season before it was 23 goals and 14 assists in 46 games in all competitions. When we look at his FB ref report over the past 365 days we can see how impressive he is as he sits in the 87th percentile for progressive passes, the 91st for progressive carries and dribbles completed as well whilst ranking in 95th for shot creating actions and 94th for expected assists, the 92nd for non-penalty XG and the 97th for non-penalty goals whilst overperforming his non-penalty XG by a massive 0.18 goals per 90 showing how good a finisher Gnabry is. As I said his expiring contract does mean he's going to be available for a great price and if Chelsea can get him they would be adding a world class talent to their attack which could be the difference between them sitting third and competing for the title with City and Liverpool. The player I would sign for Chelsea up front would be Karim Benzema who is 34, 35 in December and has just one year left on his Real Madrid contract and so could likely become available for around 15 to 20 million pounds I would estimate given his age and contract status and frankly despite Despite his age, Benzema is arguably still in his peak. Now I would prefer Lewandowski to Benzema who is the same age and would likely cost around £40 million with also one year left on his contract. But I doubt that Bayern would be willing to part with Gnabry and Lewandowski in the same window so I would prefer to go for Gnabry and then go for Benzema instead. But Benzema would be perfect for Chelsea as well. He's probably the second best deep line forward in the world behind only Kane and maybe third best if you included Lewandowski in that. At dropping off from the forward line and linking the attack and with Gnabry and either Havertz, Mount or Ziyech behind him. Benzema could drop off between the lines, creating space for the two attackers behind him to make runs ahead of his deeper movement. Benzema would certainly be an upgrade on Lukaku in terms of his play outside of the box and his goal scoring ability inside the box as well. So if Chelsea could do some sort of deal with Madrid to switch the two and get a fee for Lukaku that would be ideal but I do think that that's very unlikely so I would sell Lukaku for between 60 and 70 million pounds and use the cash to go and get Benzema. This season in La Liga he's hit 20 goals in 24 games scoring 27 goals in 32 games in all competitions and last season he managed 30 in 40 46 games, showing that Benzema despite his age is still scoring at an incredible rate. When we look at his FB Riff report we can see clearly how good he is as he ranks in the 91st percentile for non-penalty XG with 0.55 while sitting in the 97th percentile for non-penalty goals with 0.72. An absolutely massive overperformance of 0.17 per 90, 
but he's also sitting in the 96th percentile for expected assists, the 94th for shot creating actions, whilst also sitting in the 97th for progressive passes and the 92nd for progressive carries, showing that Benzema is a complete forward, having the ability to progress the ball forward into the final third, create chances for others and being able to find and convert chances himself. I think that if he did sign for Chelsea, he'd immediately be the third best forward in the league, behind only Salah and Kane, and like Gnabry, could be the key for Chelsea bridging that gap to the top two. So if we look at the squad after my theoretical transfer window, we see that we have Mendy and Kepa as the goalkeepers, a starting back three of Chalaba and Rudiger either side of Silva, with Guardiol and Saar capable of coming into the left side at centre-back position if needed, allowing Rudiger to shift the cross. And so Chelsea have an excellent array of great defenders, as well as having ball playing ability from that back three and in the wing back positions we've got James on the right and Teo on the left so you've got two of the best young attacking fullbacks in world football with Hudson Odoi and Chilwell as solid backups. The midfield double pivot of Kovacic and one of Jorginho or Kante with Gallagher also an option looks very enticing as does the two of Gnabry and one of Havart, Ziyech or Mount playing in behind Benzema with Armando Brogia as a centre forward alternative. I would say that not only does this squad work well in a 3-4-3 from a tactical perspective, but I've added three world-class talents to the starting eleven, which in my opinion would instantly close that gap to City and Liverpool and give Chelsea a significantly better chance of winning the title with a gross spend of around £140 to £150 million, which may not even result in a positive net spend with the players that Chelsea could offload. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and check out the phone cases and football shirts linked in the description with some other videos that I think you may enjoy as well.